Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ulsil and I'm really excited about today's video because I've been dying to see um, if I was able to succeed my goals for my last year's low buy. Now officially I wasn't on a low buy. Uh, I was too afraid to tell you but I really was. Over the past few years I've really been trying to be more attentional with my purchases and make sure I do some research first and don't do a whole lot of impulse purchases and all that. So we're going to dive into last year and see how I did. We're going to go month by month and we're going to start with January. So, oh, and let me just say, I am only counting makeup products, <clears throat> perfume and nail products. So I also wrote down all my skincare, all the clothing and accessories and all that, but that is not included in today's video. I don't think I'm going to make a, a separate video on those unless you really want to see that. But, but for today's video, I'm only focusing on makeup, nails and perfume. So the nails I bought, I don't have here to show you because I'm not, I'm not sure which ones I purchased in 2023. I've just written down. I have purchased press-on nails from KISS, but I will say I purchased seven press-on nails or sets, press-on sets last year. And one of the sets I bought in January. And then I also got this KISS brush on nail glue, which is what I have used for the past few years. I like it. I know that I got, I had one earlier that I like more, but I can't remember which one that was, but this works just fine. So I also got a e.l.f. brow 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 gel, uh, which is long gone. I love that. And I'm looking for it I'm trying to repurchase that one, but it's really hard to get here in Norway. So, and then I got this RMS beauty concealer in number 11.5 is sort of the shade name. It's called uncover up. So this is kind of like a hybrid between a corrector and a concealer. I really like this one. I had to get used to it a little bit because it doesn't have a high coverage, but it is buildable and it's beautiful for those no makeup makeup days. And I also like it as a part of my concealer routine. So I do a corrector first and then this one, and then I do a more high coverage concealer on top underneath my eyes. I, I can use this on my face, but I don't typically do. But I do think this is a good candidate for a repurchase. It has lasted me a long time. I've hit pan, but still have a lot of product left. But I'm happy with my purchase. I also got a Grande Lash Primer that I used up earlier. I do like it, but it was sort of a favorite product of mine earlier and then I repurchased and I didn't love it as much as I used to. I also got a gift with purchase, a face primer from RMS, which was fine. And I also got a another gift with purchase from Dermalogica, which was also a face primer. It was fine as well. Not a huge face primer girl. I got a Kula lip balm with an SPF of 30, which I didn't like at all so I decided to declutter that one and that was it for January February I got two things and like a sample um, along with a purchase so I got a repurchase of my clean skin classic perfume clean classic skin perfume I've purchased this twice before and I absolutely love this perfume. It's a staple in my perfume collection and I think I always will have one of these. Yeah, this is a, an amazing perfume. Love, love, love this one. And then I also got the Fenty Gloss Balm in Fuzzy. It's one of those lip glosses I've been eyeing for such a long time, but I just wanted to make sure to use up some of the other lip glosses that I had in my collection before I decided to purchase this one. I really like this one. I don't regret my purchase. This is what it looks like. I don't know if you can see. My camera is kind of far away today because I, again, I have problems with my lighting, but 
um, yeah, I really enjoy this uh, lip gloss. I kind of had this hyped up a lot in my head because so many people were raving about this. So I think I was expecting even more, but still, it's a good lip gloss. And then I also got a sample of the Zadik and Voltaire Vibes of Freedom, I think it was called. And I used up that one, just a small 0 0.8 milliliters. In March, I got the Billie Eilish, Eilish perfume. Really like this perfume as well. It's a lovely vanilla scent that I'm really happy I got. So, and it's, I mean, it's beautiful as well. So that's that. And then I also got the Catrice Brow Liner. It's called On Point Brow Liner in medium brown. I, I believe I had this years and years ago. This is fine. I've just come to realize that I don't know if there's a place for this product in my routine. I don't know if I absolutely need it. I have found times where it's useful to reach for this, but I don't feel like it's an absolute must. So I'm not sure if I'm going to continue to repurchase these kinds of brow products like these felt tip brow liners. At the same time, it has lasted for a while and it hasn't dried out yet. I have used it maybe on an average like four or five times a month, maybe a little bit more than that. I feel like it's somewhat worth purchasing, but at the same time, not not an absolute must. Then in April, I actually did really good. I didn't purchase any any makeup and barely anything else as well in April for some reason. I did good. So we'll just move right on to May. I just got two things. The Essence Extreme Nail Hardener. This was also a repurchase of mine. I have a huge problem with my nails, uh, they're, they're not doing well and it doesn't really help using these press-on nails either so I got one of these. I haven't really used it all that much um, so I probably should but it is pretty good actually. And I also got this Revolution Fix and Glow Dewy Finish with Shimmer Particles Setting Spray or is it setting, does it say setting spray? makeup finishing spray. This is in my current project pan, so I'm trying to finish this one. I really like it, and I was thinking about, about it this morning when I applied it. I, I'm pretty sure I will repurchase this one. It's a really good setting spray. It actually sets my makeup. It also is a little bit glowy. It's not hydrating. I don't find this hydrating at all, but I do use a hydrating setting spray before I apply my, my makeup and I feel like that really helps but this alone I would not say it's hydrating but because it contains those rosy particles that you shake up you do get that glow but it's a fake glow it's not hydrating at all that's my opinion but I do really like it for setting my makeup and it's affordable it's cruelty free and it's easy available for me so that's really great did I even say all of the other items I purchased so far is cruelty free? Just so you guys know. Then coming to June, I do I did purchase a nail polish remover, but I forgot to look at the price before I threw out the receipt, so I don't have that. And then I got the LH LH Cosmetics Onset Long Lasting Setting Spray. I haven't used this. A ton yet but I will say from the impression that I have so far it's a really good setting spray like it's amazingly good for setting my makeup it's probably better than anything I've ever tried so far for years and years Scandinavia setting spray was what I would typically go for um, it was really really good but yeah I do believe this is a tad better than that one so it's also expensive, but cruelty free. I think I'm gonna repurchase this one too, but it's not something I use every day. It's just when I really want my makeup to last for a long time. Setting sprays are one of my favorite makeup products to purchase and use. I have super dry skin, um, at least in the winter season. 
summertime it's a lot better but I mean my under eyes these days are killing me I don't know what to do I feel like I've tried it all but it is what it is anyways love that setting spray and then I also purchased this Beauty Act by Kix Stay On Color Cream Stick and Go For Green. This was actually um, impulse buy of mine because I was on my holidays, my summer vacation, and I just saw this on sale. And I've been really into green eyeshadows for the past two years, I'd say. And this just looked really, really promising. And I do like it. It's not going to be a repurchase or anything. I'm not huge on cream eyeshadows, but yeah, I don't regret buying it. I do enjoy it. And then for July, I just have to make sure I'm on on the right track. I got two perfumes. I actually have a separate video where I review these two. The Kayali Yum Pistachio Gelato 33. This is also a very interesting perfume because the more I use it, it, it takes a while to get to know this, you know? It is it is amazingly good. It is really good. And the more I use it, the more I like it. At first, it was a disappointment because I was expecting something else, um, like a super yummy pistachio scent, which it, it, it kind of is in that middle note, but... It doesn't settle down like that. Again, look at my review if you want to know the full um, full thoughts on this. But yeah, I I do really, really enjoy this. I'm really glad I got this. I this is my only Kayali perfume in my collection. Yeah, beautiful, lovely perfume. And then I got the Mott Vanilla from Ariana Grande. Also, I don't like the packaging, but also a lovely vanilla scent. Beautiful, glad I got it. Yeah, it's a really nice scent. Then I decided to do a small ColourPop purchase. I repurchased the Pretty Fresh Setting Mist from ColourPop. This is like my probably my top favorite. Um, well, actually it's not. It's a runner-up. <laughs> um, hydrating setting spray. My absolute favorite is my Pixi Glow Mist that I I probably used like I don't know 25 30 bottles of this. I don't know how many bottles I've used of this. Six maybe something like that. I really really enjoy this one. I purchased two of these actually last year. I'll get to the second one but yeah yeah that's all I have to say about that one and then I got the ColourPop Star Wars Mandalorian The Child 9 Pam palette. This was my only eyeshadow palette purchase of last year. I've been really doing good in that area area as well. Here are the shadows. Like I said, I've been really into green eyeshadow these past few years and this was just the perfect one for me. I had to do a lot of research on this one too. I have a, a separate re review on this one as well if you are interested. But yeah, beautiful green eyeshadows and really glad I got it. I got, I've got i so far gotten a lot of good use out of this and now that I look at it, I can't wait to use it again. I think my favorite eyeshadow is this middle one, Baby Face. That's actually so, so pretty. Just this like soft sage green. This is what that one looks like. So yeah, I'm really happy about this purchase. And it's not like a huge palette either. All right, I, I hope I'm not forgetting anything here. Um, I think I did really well writing down every single thing. It, there's just a lot of, I have all my clothing, accessories, skincare and gifts and everything all included into one month so I'm just trying to make sure I I got it all all right I got a micro cell glass file nail file I don't know where that's at but it is included in this haul I just I don't have it here to show you as a gift with purchase for some skincare and hair care items I got this Zoya hot lips glossy lip balm 
and I've never heard of this before. I thought Soya only had nail polishes, but apparently they don't. And I was pleasantly surprised by this lip gloss. It smells a little bit sweet, and I like the applicator as well. It's a really nice, more vibrant color for great for summer, I think. And I also got a little birthday gift, which I haven't even opened yet because I have so many lip balms to go through first. But this is by, I think the brand is called Lip Glam. It's a beauty balm with argan oil, multi-purpose balm. So I don't, I have no idea if this is any good or anything, but I am really excited to try it. And by the way, if you're wondering, I, I don't think you are because I'm a very um, small channel, but none of this is sponsored by any means. And then we have September. So I got a gift, like a, two hand-me-downs, a Guerlain Golden Bee palette, eyeshadow palette, which I since have decluttered. It was not working out very well for me. Um, it was patchy and not pigmented at all. And it's not a cruelty-free brand, so I thought, I, since I don't like it at all, there's no um, reason for me to keep it. And then I also got another hand-me-down gift, which was the Makeup Store Eyeliner in Awesome Performance. This is a metallic, darker purple shade. It's actually really, really beautiful, and I'm so glad I got this. Hopefully you can see. Yeah, I've been using this a lot since I got it, so I'm really, I, my makeup store eyeliners are one of my favorites, um, at least the metallic ones. I really, really like. And then I will say, because I, I'm, I, I don't quite remember how I decided to do this, because I got some gift cards throughout the year, and I cannot, for the life of me, remember if, those are added. I don't know how I did that, so I, I, I'm sorry about that, but anyways, then moving on to October, that's when I got two out of the three perfume discovery sets. So I got the Clean Reserve Travel Spray Layering Collection. So this contains four Clean Reserve perfumes. They each have five milliliters. Yes, they each contain five mil milliliters. And, oh, well, that's hard to say. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, I, it's just been really interesting trying out these different perfumes. And again, I talk more about these discovery sets in both shorts and other perfume videos. But let me know if you want me to talk more about any of these perfumes or makeup products that I'm talking about today. I will definitely do that. But yeah, so, so happy I got these. I think it's a great way, discovery sets are a great way to discover perfumes without fully commit to a big bottle. And then I also got the Juliet Has a Gun discovery set. This has seven bottles that contains 1.7 milliliters and then one bottle that contains five milliliters. And this is what it looks like. I'm currently trying out this mm perfume. Uh, this is in my rotation. Don't love that one, but yeah, I'm trying. Moving on to November, that's when my I got my third perfume discovery set. This one was from Skylar. It came, contained five samples with 1.5 milliliters in each. All of these perfume brands are cruelty free as well, just so you know. Right now I have these two, Isle Escape and Vanilla Sky in my rotation. And I will say I don't absolutely love I mean, I like them, don't get me wrong. I like them on their own, but combined, they are divine. I absolutely love them. I wish they had a perfume that had these two combined, but because they're not, because I have to mix them, I don't think they're gonna be repurchases of mine. If I were to buy any of these perfumes, it contains Salt Air, Isle Escape, Capri Summer, Pink Canyon, and Vanilla Sky, and out of those, I think Salt Air was my favorite. But yeah, 
really glad I got to try out these Skylar perfumes as well. It is very difficult to uh, find Skylar in Norway. So, And then I got some more press-on nails, four to be exact, four sets. I got some smaller gift sets from Charlotte Tilbury. Uh, so I got some minis. I gave away some and then I kept these. I got the Charlotte Tilbury lip baths. One was in Pillow Talk and the other one, the other one, this one, is in Walk of Shame. And then we have Pillow Talk right here. Really nice um, lip glosses. Really, really nice. I love them. And then I got a mini of the Pillow Talk lipstick. Uh, I've only tried this like twice, I think, so far, but I do, I do like this one. Not a complete favorite, not going to repurchase or anything, but at least that's not how I see it right now, but it's okay. I probably will repurchase the lip baths. Those were really nice. I also got a blush, the Pillow Talk Matte Beauty Blush Wand, Easy Liquid Blush. I was um, skeptical of this one, but I ended up absolutely loving it. It is uh, what is on my uh, cheeks today. It's probably rubbed off because I touch my face all the time. But yeah, I think it is a beautiful shade, easy to blend. I just apply three dots on each cheek and I blend it out with my finger fingers. It's super simple. If I don't touch my face a whole lot, it does last for a good while. I will say I usually top it with a powder blush. That's just how I apply my makeup. I love doing that combination of cream blush underneath as a base and then top it with a powder blush. I find it is more long lasting that way and it's fine to combine different shades as well. But yeah, it's such a lovely blush really really like this one and lastly this is also on my eyes today actually as a liner the pillow talk eyeliner from charlotte tilbury as well this is a very interesting eyeliner it is a brown but it's more of a burgundy brown very unique nothing i've never seen anything like this and it's very complimentary to my eyes, I feel like. I think it's even prettier on brown eyes or with brown eyes and maybe green eyes as well. It sort of just enhances the eye color. My eyes today, I don't know, it's not nothing big, but I have the Pillow Talk Cream Eyeshadow, Eyes to Mesmerize Cream Shadow from Pillow, uh, Charlotte Tilbury as a base all over. And then I just applied a little bit of a a metallic rosy shade that I have in my Beauty Act quad and then I just applied this as a liner and my Gold Digger from Makeup Store eyeliner underneath my lower lash line if you guys are wondering. Then finally we're left with December and I decided to do a bigger Colourpop haul I got all of these things. <laughs> Initially, I was drawn in to the ColourPop website because they had an offer of this, I think it was called Surprise Gift Box Bag, or something like that. Uh, I think it was like 10 or $15, I can't really remember at this time, and I was just dragged into it. all those like surprise boxes and gift bags always interests me and then I sort of so I put it in my chart thinking I was gonna purchase this and then I started thinking like and this is this is really the reason why I started on these little bites because it makes me really think about every single purchase so what went through my head was excitement curiosity I wanted to see what well, what do I actually get for these 10 or 15 dollars they talked about having full-size products i was really intrigued but then i told myself or i reminded myself that i have no idea what's in there it, there could be shades that i don't want uh formulas that doesn't work for me uh, just things that i would never 
even use or think to try or purchase myself. I quickly decided not to purchase that, but then while I was there, I saw that this one lip product that I have been wanting for, I mean, ever since it got out, and it's, that's many, many years, many years, I don't know how many years, but we're talking many years. The ColourPop Lippy Sticks in Oh Snap was finally in stock. And every single time, for the past few years, every single time that I've been on this website, it's been out of stock. So I was just, I was just losing hope that I would ever get to try this. And this was also another product, just like the Gloss Bomb from Fenty. This was really hyped up in my head. I thought this was like the perfect lipstick for me, the perfect shade. I've watched so many videos of people using this and raving about this lip shade. And so I thought I was going to love this. Turns out I feel like it's not mauvey <laughs> and cool enough for me, like cool toned enough for me. Um, so I guess it wasn't the best buy, but again, it's been a product I've been wanting to try for so many years and I finally got around to try it. So I'm glad I did that, but at the same time, it's not going to be a favorite of mine, I don't think. Yeah. And then while I was at it, I don't know if you remember me talking about it in my declutter video, but I wanted to switch out my oldest eyeliner from NYX in the color Azure. It was sort of a turquoise eyeliner that I feel like is a staple in my eyeliner collection because I love using um, a tur turquoise eyeliner in my lower waterline and I've been looking for a new one for so long and the next one was just probably expired by now. And then I came across these creme gel liners, which I've, I've had one of these earlier, the one in Mr. Bing, RIP. I really love that one. And so I thought I would try this one. And so far I've only swapped it or like tried it in my lower lash line. I haven't actually worn it for a whole day because it's not the color for me in the winter time. It's more a summer eyeliner for me. It looks really promising. It's called Crystal Crush and this is the shade, what it looks like. It looks really promising. Let me go and get my, my next eyeliner. Hold on. This is what that one looks like. Let me swatch it. Okay, that is the next one and this is the ColourPop one. So I will say the next one is a little bit lighter. It also has some shimmer to it. So I wouldn't say they're exact dupes, but I do believe that they will do the same kind of job. So, so I think I'm officially going to declutter this eyeliner. After I finished my Wow Brow from e.l.f., I was looking to repurchase that one, and since I couldn't, I thought I have to try to find a replacement of some sort. And I came across this one from ColourPop again. <laughs> and this one's called just Brow Gel in Light Brown. Absolute fail. Don't, don't like this one at all. I don't like the shade very much. I don't like anything about this. It's super gooey and it doesn't really um, set my brows. It's not like I'm not looking for like a waxy brow. That's not, not me at all, but I want a little bit, just a little bit of hold. And this is just super creamy and gooey and weird. And I am giving it a chance, hoping it will change a little bit as it dries. We'll see. So far, I'm not happy with this one at all. And lastly, I got really excited because I saw this one was in stock as well, the ColourPop BFF Volumizing Mascara in Brownie Points and I initially thought that this was the mascara um, Kelly Gooch was raving about from Colourpop. I'm actually realizing now that I'm looking at this, I, I'm starting to think that maybe it was another brown mascara from Colourpop that she really loved. Let me know if you remember which one she was talking about. 
but I got really excited because I thought it was this this one and I've owned one of these before in this royal blue shade which I did like it wasn't like an absolute favorite but I thought it was really fun to have a blue mascara in my collection and I'm so happy about the fact that brown mascara has become a trend again because that's really what suits me the best. I mean in my teenage years I only purchased brown or dark brown mascaras. I thought that black mascaras were was just too harsh for me uh, having such a pale skin but the past 10 to 15 years it's been so difficult to find brown mascaras on the market so I just been forced to buy black mascaras and so now that it's on trend again I am able to uh, purchase brown mascaras finally so I'm really happy about that I haven't tried this at all yet my last perfume purchase of the year was this rituals Eau the Orient I probably got that wrong but beautiful beautiful perfume from rituals I got one other perfume from that brand that I absolutely love as well and this oh this is a love-hate thing for me because me personally I love this perfume but my family does not so I I have to consider them so I can't really use it around them so I absolutely love this perfume and it's very much a crisp Christmassy oriental spicy vanilla perfume but you have to smell it before you purchase it I will say that I think people are gonna either hate this or love this perfume it's it's one of those and finally I got two Christmas gifts that are makeup related and the first one is the Kaya that do you look glow setting spray this is a brand from a super popular um, Swedish influencer and I have so far I haven't tried anything from her brand and I've been dying to try something from her I've looked at the bronzers and mascaras and also the setting spray perfumes so I'm really really happy I got this I haven't gotten around to try it too much just yet but I can't wait to do so and then I also got this Clarins velvet lip perfector in number two I believe yes number two I got one of these skin perfectors um, but it is nothing like this one this is like a matte lip tint sort of it's the weirdest thing it's it's not like a lip it's not like a liquid lipstick but it's in that category uh, it looks really nice on the lips it feels really nice it's it doesn't feel super drying so it's it's interesting it's a very interesting lip product that I am excited to get to know some more and that sums up all of my makeup purchases gifts with samples and gifts from friends and family in the beginning of the year I did decide to note some budget restrictments that's a hard word to say so let's go over that so for mascara and mascara primers, I I set a limit of one, which I did well on that one. I only bought one mascara. For brows, a maximum of three, which I did. I got the Wow Brow that I used up, and then I got these ones as well. Setting sprays, a maximum of three. I went a little overboard there. I got five setting sprays plus one as a gift so I doubled that amount of of uh, setting spray goals but I I think it's okay because I have used so many I think I can't remember the exact number of setting sprays I used up last year but it was maybe five or six something like that so I I think it's okay and then I uh, foundation Maximum of one. I didn't buy any foundations last year. I'm really happy about that. Concealer, a maximum of two concealers. I only purchased one. Uh, I will say though, I have purchased one this year al already. So that's that. But 
blush maximum of two i only got i only got one mini so that's great for eyeshadow palettes maximum of two i got one eyeshadow palette and one cream eyeshadow um nails eight or less i i put a pretty high goal because i knew that i wanted to use press on nails it's it's a thing for me <laughs> these days so it's a pretty high number but that's i knew that was what was going to work for me i ended up purchasing seven sets. As for perfumes, that's where I went a little overboard. Um, I set a maximum of three. I purchased five like bigger size, not full size. I think the biggest one was was 30. I believe so. I think so. It, the, the writing on these things are just super tiny. But yeah, 30 milliliters or less. And then I got three sample kits so I count them as one so like this is one product even though it contains five samples so adding up that I purchased 34 items plus I got four gifts but then I also got other things things that weren't on this restrictment list so adding up all the numbers just have to look at my notes here all the numbers all in all I purchased I believe I if I have counted this correctly 47 items that's a lot that's a lot but I still feel like I did pretty good it wasn't like an overwhelming amount each month I mean there's a lot of products but I, I probably went a little overboard with perfume but at the same time that has become my main passion these days and I probably could have done without purchasing that many lip products because I'm not using them up quickly enough but I will say I did finish I did finish 36 makeup products last year and if I compare in 2022 I purchased makeup for $943 and for last year, adding all these products up, I I purchased makeup for $582.94. So I think that's that's at least that's an improvement. This is my main hobby. I love perfumes, I love makeup, I'm really into skincare as well. <laughs> so I I feel like I did well. It could have gone so much worse. I do believe it's good to have that low buy kind of thinking uh, and always be intentional when you purchase new makeup and new perfumes but I also want to have fun and I feel like I've, I've created a good balance um, this year. I will say though I reflected on this and because I was trying to be really restrictive with my makeup purchases this year I ended up buying a lot of clothes way way too much I will say and still not an excessive amount but way more than I usually do and so I don't know if that would have been different if I wasn't so restrictive with my makeup um, but for this year I really want to do do well on all areas I haven't quite figured out any new goals for next year maybe I should do that together with you we should also look at my wish list at the same time because I have created I have an ongoing uh, wish list on Pinterest and just kind of see like what's on the market that I really want to purchase because whenever I have time and energy I go ahead and do some research on those items just another way to have something to look forward to uh, while I do these project pans and then also make sure I am intentional when I purchase new items I will quickly give you a little brief of what is on my wish list this year and then we'll create some new goals for the coming year and that's a little bit scary to me because last year like I said I was a little bit secretive um, is that a word with 
sharing my goals for last year. So this is, yeah, it's scary, but it, I feel like it makes me commit a little bit more if I'm doing it public. So yeah, we have the Ilia Sheer Foundation. I've been trying to, you know, with a dropper, I've been wanting to try that for a really long time. I kind of want to repurchase the Charlotte Tilbury color corrector that I used up last year because I really love that. But I do have a Bobbi Brown corrector that's probably going to last me all year, so I don't think I have to purchase it this year. There's perfumes from Kayali I want to try. The Amber Saffron from Clean Reserve, I want to try that one. And also the one called Solar Bloom, I want to try. I'm trying to find the Profusion Blush Hour Liquid Blush. That looks so interesting to me, but I can't find it anywhere, so I'm assuming that it is discontinued. There's also this Rehab Line Fix Under Eye Primer from Revolution that I've heard really good things about and me and my, this is like, my under eyes are my problem area. Um, so maybe that could fix things, I don't know. I've been looking at the Pixi Beauty Balm and then the HT, H2O Skin Tint from both from Pixies. I'm trying to figure out which one is best, which one do I want to try, or do I want to try them at all? I'm not sure. The Milani Cheek Kiss Cream Blush I really want to try. That looks awesome. I wonder if any of you have tried the Lauren Conrad Loved of the Perfume. It, I haven't seen any reviews on that, so I have no idea if that's a suitable perfume for me, but I'm probably Lauren Conrad's biggest fan. <laughs> So I would really want to support her and figure out where I can purchase this perfume. But also, I I don't know if I should purchase it if I know for sure it's not going to be a perfume I will use. I'm going to have to think about that one. LA Girl Gel Glide Eyeliners. I looked at those colorful eyeliners thinking about purchasing a turquoise one, but then since I ended up purchasing the ColourPop one, I probably won't purchase any of these anytime soon, I don't think. I know for a fact that I want to try the Fenty Sunstalker Bronzer, the lightest shade. That's most likely going to be a purchase of mine this year. The Desert Lights eyeshadow palette from Flower Beauty, I've been wanting to try for a long time, but Flower Beauty is not available here in Norway, so it's impossible to get. Same with the Peach and Lily brand. I want to try their glass, what's it called? The glass veil something mist, but it's just impossible to get. Also want to try the Sigma Beauty Spectrum Color Correcting Duo. I've heard good things about that. Or the Pixi Beauty Correction Concentrate, one of those, but again, I'm gonna have my color corrector from Bobby Brown for a while, so probably won't repurchase this year. I've been eyeing the e.l.f. O Face Satin Lipsticks, especially the one in Effortless. That looks really nice and promising, but at the same time, I feel like lip glosses and lip oils are the way to go these days, and I'm happy about it because that's what I prefer on my lips. I don't want like a super full coverage bullet lipstick. It's not, it's never really been my thing. So I don't know if I want to include another bullet lipstick in my collection, but we'll see. Uh, also the e.l.f. Cosmetics Halo Glow Setting Powder looks really promising, either just the translucent one or the pink version. I really wanted to try some Lethal Cosmetics eyeshadows. Those look so beautiful. kind of want to repurchase the Makeup Revolution Eye Bright Concealer. I really like that concealer as well. There's a few setting sprays from e.l.f. I want to try. The Dewy Coconut Setting Mist and the Stay All Day Blue Light Micro Setting Mist. Um, let me know if you've tried any of these products. I would love to know your thoughts on them. Also the Eyebrow Pencil Instant Lift Brow Pencil from e.l.f. I been curious to try. The lip balms from Summer Fridays, definitely going to be my next lip balm purchase. Also this foundation from number seven, the Protect and Perfect Advanced All-in-One Foundation. Looks really nice, but again, 
it's nowhere to be found here in Norway. Same with the Essence Pure Nude Baked Blush. I don't... They look so pretty, but I can't find them anywhere. If if I do find them, I probably will purchase one of those. Let me know your favorite color on those and why you like that particular color. And then, is that it? Oh, there's some mascaras as well. The um, Kali, Kali Ray Mascara. And then Makeup Revolution 5D Lash Pal Mascara. Fenty Full Frontal Volume Lift and Curl Mascara. And Iden, 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 Iden Minerals Mascara Water Volume 38 Celsius is what that one's called. And then the ELF Cosmetics Lash Extender Mascara. Really want to try that one. So there's a lot of mascaras on the market that I want to try. The Stila Convertible Color in Lilium, that looks really beautiful. I wanted to try the Stila um, Convertible Color blushes for years, but I've never tried any of them. And then we have the About Face brand, Is I'm kind of curious about. I kind of want to try their matte fluid eye paints, and then they have these like click up lip color butters as well. Oh, and I forgot about the Lash and Roll Mascara from e.l.f. I want to try that one too. I think, I believe, Kelly Gooch have read about that one. Then we have the Kosas Plump and Juicy Vegan Collagen Spray on Serum Spray. Very promising to the skin, um, but I can't find that one anywhere either. Co the Kosas brand is very hard to find in Norway as well. I kind of wanted to try uh, the Sigma eyeshadows. The new mod eyeshadow palette looks really nice and right up my alley. Also the LA Girl Shade Shifter Duochrome eyeshadows look so beautiful. There's another setting spray called Surf Proof I think from Calorie that looks really nice as well. Um, there's a perfume from Pistachi Skincare, the Pistachio Biscotti perfume. I saw Caffeine Lights rave about this perfume. I'm, I'm gonna tell you this, the truth. I have just purchased that one. I'm waiting for that to arrive and yeah, I can't wait to do a review on that one. Hopefully I love it. I've also been looking at the Bianco Latte Giardini di Toscana perfume, but that was just too expensive for me. So I'm not going to prioritize that one just yet. Skylar Fall Cashmere, trying to figure out if that would be a perfume for me. Um, maybe, maybe not. There's a discovery set from Pacifica, the, the Moon perfumes. I really want to try those. So I want to see if I can get my hands on the discovery set. It contains five of those perfumes. Specifically the Sunrise Moon and what's this? The, the Cherry Moon looks like two perfumes I would love to try. And then, like I said, the Kaya brand, I really want to try a perfume from them. Specifically the Amici perfume. Okay, I've been talking for too long about things I wish for. The, the wish list is long and these are not purchases I'm gonna do anytime soon. They're just on my wish list. Do more research on them and try to figure out if I really wanna uh, include them and welcome them into my collection. We'll see. But now let's move on to goals for next year or this year, 2024. So let's see, primers. You know what? I don't want to buy any new primers. I have three that I'm trying to go through and primers is not something I have to have. So I think I'm going to put zero on primers. And then foundation. I have like three to four foundations on my wish list. That doesn't mean I have to purchase them this year. I think I'm going to put one as a like a, a maximum because I still have three foundations that I'm working on. I don't want to have too many in my collection. I'm really happy about having three. I would ideally have just one or two to be honest. So one is good. Concealer, I've already purchased one. I don't think I need to purchase any more um, this year. So I'll just put one powders. I have one pressed and one loose powder in my collection currently. I feel like 
I won't be able to use up the pressed one this year. Maybe the loose one. I'll set one. Maybe I would have to purchase a loose powder. Bronzers. I want to set one because I, ha I really want to try that Fenty one. So one bronzer. What about blush? I have many blushes on my wish, wish list, but at the same time, I have a lot of blushes as well. Blush, though, is kind of my weak point when it comes to makeup, and I have a lot of fun with blush. Maybe I should set two, but hopefully, yeah, I'm gonna set two. I, ideally, I should not purchase any, but not more than two, okay. Highlighters, I do not want to purchase any more highlighters. I have more than enough. That's not, it's kind of like primers. I use it, but it's not crucial for me to use. So zero on that one. What else? Setting sprays, I'll set a number of four. Mascaras, there's so many mascaras I want to try, but I have so many in my collection currently maximum of one I feel like or two two I'll set two I have so many eyeliners as well not more than one eyeshadows eyeshadow primers I, I don't I'm not gonna buy that's a part of my primers category uh, but eyeshadows not more than one palette I really don't want to buy any more palettes this year to be honest but I'll set one palette and one like single I might purchase like a cream shadow or a single eye shadow, we'll see. But I really just want to get some use out of the ones that I have already. Brows, I mean, I want to I wanna probably buy another brow gel. I want to try to find the e.l.f. one. I'm going to set a number of maximum two because I might buy like a brow pencil or something. We'll see. And then we have lips. I'm kind of eyeing the the Summer Fridays lip balm. But other than that, I don't feel like I should buy a whole lot of lip products this year because I like I said, even though it's I don't have an overwhelming amount of lip products in my collection, it does take some time to use them up. And I really don't want them to expire on me. So I, I think I'm going to be pretty tough in that category. Yeah, I'm going to put a maximum of two. That's it. So let's add this up. Okay, so 19 items. I haven't put nails in. Let me be a little bit more restrictive with nails this year. I'm going to put five, not more than five. I'm going to put no more than 10 perfumes as a goal. I know that sounds like a lot, but for me, like I said, perfume is a passion of mine. I've already purchased some perfumes in January, so I know that it's going to be a higher number. So adding that up, we're talking 34 items. Let's round it up to no more than 35 items is my goal for next year. Last year, it was no more than 30 or a maximum of 30 products uh, it ended up it ended up being 47 items like all in all so I think 35 is like reasonable for me to set as a goal when it comes to dollars 582 I'm hoping not more than $500 worth of makeup all in all for this coming year of 2024 that's going to be my low buy goal this year. Okay, that wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you have any sort of goals for this coming year when it comes to your makeup purchases. I would love to know. And that's it for this video. I know it was a long one, but I do hope you enjoyed it. So that's it. Hope you have a good day. Bye.